Did you know that the water you drink today may have been drunk by dinosaurs? All the water on the earth has always been here. The water that exists never disappears and no new water is ever created. Huh? How does that happen? The water just keeps changing form. Sometimes it's a liquid. Sometimes it's a solid. Sometimes it's a gas. In the environment, water changes form as it moves through the water cycle. Think of the water cycle like a bicycle wheel. It has no beginning and no end. But it does have four phases that occur over and over and over again. Precipitation, accumulation, evaporation, and condensation. Want to see how it works? We can start anywhere. I'm in the precipitation stage. During precipitation, water falls to the earth as rain, as hail, or as snow. Where does the water go after it falls? It flows down creeks and storm drains into rivers, lakes, and oceans. This is the accumulation stage. Some water even accumulates underground. It fills in spaces between rocks. Now here's something you can try to see how water is stored underground. First, get a cup. Now, fill it to the top with sand or gravel. Do you think it's full? Try to get a little bit more in. Now add water. You can see how water fills in the spaces between the rocks and accumulates underground. After it is accumulated above ground, water does an amazing thing. It changes form. It evaporates. From a liquid, it becomes an invisible gas. What makes water change form? As the sun shines on water, it heats up the water molecules. When the water molecules get hot enough, they evaporate. That is, turn into a gas. The gas molecules rise up into the atmosphere. As they rise, the molecules cool and begin to condense on particles of dust. That means they turn back into very teeny water drops. When the teeny water drops gather together, they form clouds or fog. Water continues to condense until the water droplets or snowflakes become too large and heavy to stay up in the sky and are pulled to Earth by an invisible force, gravity. This brings us back to the precipitation stage where we join the water cycle. The water cycle keeps on going and going over and over again. Powered by heat from the sun and gravity from the Earth. Precipitation, accumulation, evaporation, and condensation. You can see how the water cycle works by trying this experiment. You may need a grown-up to help you. Put the lid to a pot in the refrigerator. Then put some water in the pot. And heat the water on the stove. Like the heat from the sun, the heat from the stove makes the water evaporate. Take the cold lid out of the refrigerator. You can use it to see how water condenses as it rises and cools. After a while, the water becomes too heavy to stay on the lid, and it rains back into the pot to start the water cycle all over again. By now, you're probably wondering where we fit in the water cycle. Where do we get the water we use? 
And how does water get inside the pipes in our houses? In most cases, a water company delivers water to us through a system of pipes and valves. But where does the water company get the water? Water companies get water in different places. They can build wells and pump water from underground, where water is stored in layers of rock. Water can also be pumped from lakes, rivers, or streams. In some areas, water that falls during the winter is saved in man-made lakes called reservoirs. During the summer, when it doesn't rain very much, we can use the water in the reservoirs. But water doesn't come directly to our homes. It has to be treated first. Take a look at the water in this glass. It looks clean, doesn't it? Would you like a drink? Nah, I can't let you do that. The water I just scooped out of the lake may have bacteria in it, and even though you can't see it, it may make you very sick. People have even died from drinking this. Before we can drink any water safely, the harmful bacteria has to be killed, and the water needs to be clean. So most of our water goes to a treatment plant to be purified and cleaned. First, chemicals like chlorine are added to the water to make sure all the germs are killed. Then the water is filtered. That means it's poured into a filter like sand, gravel, or carbon. The filter catches a lot of the dirt and germs and lets only the clean water flow through. I'm going to show you how to make your own water filter. Cut the bottom off of a plastic bottle. You may need to ask an adult for help. Put a piece of wire screen or nylon over the neck and secure it with a rubber band. Now add some small pebbles. Coarse sand. And finally, some fine sand. Run water through to clean the filter. Then get some really dirty, muddy, yucky water and pour it through. You can see how the filter traps a lot of the stuff that was in the water. Unfiltered, filtered, but don't drink it. Chlorine needs to be added again to kill any harmful bacteria that still may be hanging around. The water is finally ready for us to use, so it's pumped into pipes that lead to our home. Where does the water go after we use it? It's cleaned again at a sewage treatment plant so that it can be returned to lakes and rivers and it won't hurt the little animals and plants that live there. And who knows, the way the water cycle works, after it accumulates, evaporates, condenses, and precipitates, you might even end up drinking this water again sometime in the future. Thank <laughs> you.